What is up YouTube? How are you guys doing? You clicked on this video because you want to know the differences between the Ultra Olympus 5 and the Ultra Mont Blanc. They were both released last year in 2022. The Mont Blanc came out early in the year and the Olympus came out somewhere in the summer 2022. This is the first version of the Mont Blanc that Ultra released. They also released a different one later on with a different lacing system, the Boa lacing system, but it was like 30 euros more expensive. Probably worth it, but I didn't buy them. I was pretty happy with the regular version. Back when the Mont Blanc was released, it was marketed as a racing shoe, but I do know a lot of people love racing ultra marathons in the Olympus. Looking at the stack out of these shoes, I kind of thought that they would be very similar. So I decided to get the Mont Blanc instead of the Olympus. The Mont Blanc I bought with my own money, whereas the Olympus was sent to me by Ultra for testing and review. Obviously, I'm going to be completely honest about all the shoes I review. But who am I anyway? I'm TD Miller. I love running. I'm a big Ultra fanboy. So if you want to see more reviews about Ultras or comparisons, how about you subscribe? It's the only way for my channel to grow. Maybe in the future, I'll be able to review other brands as well. This is just a comparison between two shoes, helping you to find the right shoe. I'm not trying to sell these shoes. I'm not gonna throw a bunch of marketing mumbo jumbo in here. There's plenty of that on the internet. But let's get to the shoes. Let's start with the fit or the third shape, like Alto likes calling them. If you're new to Ultra, Ultra comes in three different third shapes. They have the original third shape, which is the widest base and with the widest toe box. Then you have the standard fit, which is slightly more tapered, but still wider than mainstream. And that's the most narrow fit. You have the so-called slim fit, but that's also still wider than most mainstream brands out there. The Mont Blanc is the standard fit, so you do have a little bit more space in the Olympus, especially around the midfoot and the heel. You can feel that there's just a lot more space in there. It's nice and comfortable, it's nice and spacious. So uh, for me, uh, my feet tend to swell up when I run, so it's great having so much space. Some people don't like that about the Olympus, that it's a little bit more tapered. My feet have plenty of space in there and the upper is very stretchy. So your feet still have plenty of space in there. I ran a couple of races in them and I really enjoyed them. I think a lot of people don't like racing in them because there is very little protection on them. Ultra made them as light as possible for racing, but because of that, there's less protection on it. Looking at the front of the shoe, there is virtually no protection here. So if you were to kick a rock or a branch, you're gonna hurt yourself. The Olympus does have some protection. Obviously, if you kick something hard, you're gonna hurt yourself, but you're not gonna get bloody toenails that quickly in them. The upper is slightly more rigid, so it won't be snagging anytime soon. The upper of the Olympus is very stretchy, so a lot of people are afraid that it will tear easily. So far, after 190 kilometers in them, they're still looking good. No tears whatsoever. What a lot of Ultra fans love about these shoes are obviously the outsoles. Both have Vibram. The Olympus has the Vibram Mega Grip, whereas the Mont Blanc has the Vibram Light Base. It's the same rubber. However, the Light Base is supposed to be 30% lighter than the Mega Grip. They perform just as well. If you look at the lugs, you'll see that the Mega Grip has a few millimeters more than the Light Base. And also on both shoes, you'll see that there's plenty of exposed midsole, trying to keep the shoes as light as possible. Talking about weight, my Mont Blanc comes in in a size 10 at 290 grams, and the Olympus 5 comes in 45 grams heavier at 335 grams, making them significantly heavier. So on the long run, you will definitely notice the weight. They both have the Ultra Ego midsole. Mont Blanc has a 30 millimeter stack height, whereas the Olympus has 33 millimeter stack height. I personally think 33 is way too much. The shoe does become a little bit less stable because of that, and that's probably why they have such a massive heel. As you can see, comparing the two shoes, you'll see that the Olympus has a lot more going on around there. It doesn't look that it's zero drop, but, but apparently they are. It just kind of goes up and wraps around your heel for extra stability. If you look at the heel cup, you'll see they're both V-shaped. And talking about the heel cup, people hated that on the Mont Blanc. People have a hard time getting a good heel lock going on. I personally didn't have such a big issue with it. I was taping my ankles to prevent blisters, so that helped me get a better heel lock. But that's definitely one reason not to get the Mont Blanc. I don't have any issues in the heel lock with the Olympus. However, I do need to use a runner's knot and tighten the laces a little bit because on the downhill, my feet tend to move forward or shift forward and my toes will bump up against the front of the shoe. Another thing people hated about the Mont Blanc is the tongue. I personally also didn't like the tongue. It's a little too short. They should have made it at least half a centimeter longer and it is not thick at all. So there's not much padding going on. So you do feel the laces press up against the top of your feet. And I think a lot of people exchange the laces with flat laces. The Olympus, I really like the tongue. It's cut in the middle, so it doesn't cut into the front of your ankle. It's nice and padded and the laces are flat, which is great. Both shoes have Velcro on the back so that you can connect a trail gaiter. 
There's no clip on the front of the Mont Blanc, but that's no problem. You can just connect it to the laces. But the Olympus does have a little clip like this for the trail gator. Go back to the heel cup. As you can see, the Mont Blanc doesn't have any kind of structure in there. It's all very flexible. So your ankles can move very easily. The Mont Blanc is very structured. There's no way you can push this down. That's kind of a shame. I prefer having a little bit more flexibility, but I think they're afraid that people will roll their ankles because of the extra stack height. This heel flare is a little odd. I'm not sure why it needs to be so bulky. I never use a pull tab, but in case you like it, that's the pull tab. The Mont Blanc's pull tab is a little bit more basic. So when would I use these shoes? I really enjoy running in the Mont Blanc, especially when I go racing. There is a slight rocker shape towards the front. So it really helps me lean forward a lot and it lets me run faster. The Olympus has a slight rocker and it is very comfortable for long runs. But for racing, I may stick with the Mont Blanc again. Unless the race is very technical and has a lot of rocks, then maybe the Olympus will come in handy. They're definitely not a bad racing shoe. You just need to know that they're heavier and a little bit more bulky. Something that I don't particularly like about the Olympus is the heel. It really feels like it's making me land heel first every time and I don't have that problem with the Mont Blanc. As for breathability, the Mont Blanc is obviously a lot better. The fabric is very thin and dries up immediately. It's almost see-through at some points, but the Olympus is also pretty great. It keeps your feet nice and warm. Water obviously comes in, but it also drains out pretty quickly. So what do you think about these two shoes? Do you have either of them? Are you considering buying them? Let me know in the comments down below. I'm happy to hear your thoughts or if you think I've missed anything. So far I've done 190 kilometers in them and 75 kilometers in them. So yeah, thank you for watching and see you guys next time. Bye.